Hi, this is Art History and Video Games. My name is Hania Ray. Today I'm going to be looking at art historical influences in the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. By that, I mean I'll be pointing out references to architecture, artworks, and objects throughout history. For those who haven't played Wind Waker or The Legend of Zelda, the game is typically set in a mythical land of Hyrule, though this time Hyrule has been submerged under a vast ocean. So anyway, let's go look at a spot midpoint in the game. This is the Tower of the Gods, and is pretty much the turning point of Wind Waker. At the bottom level, you're floating along what looks like an ancient walkway with vaulted brick ceilings, but now it's all underwater. The look of this area is actually really similar to the crypt of San Zachariah in Venice, Italy. Of course, you can't float around in the crypt, but it's slightly under sea level. The crypt's vaulted ceilings are held up by Romanesque drum columns, which were built in the 9th century. The crypt is also said to be the house of St. Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. Now I'm on Dragon Roost Island talking to the young Rito Prince Kamali. The Rito tribe are small, bird-like people that deliver mail within Wind Waker. These bird people are interesting because they resemble the mythological protective deities from ancient Near East, known as Abkalu, or griffin demons. This carved piece of ivory is from Eastern Anatolia, or modern-day Turkey. Abkali were also carved into an ancient stone panel from the palace of Astronaut Sir Paul II. I know, right? Try saying Astronaut Sir Paul five times fast. The panel was behind the throne at Nimrod, which makes sense if you're a king. You want all the deity protection you can get. Here we are now at a group of islands in the Great Sea called Great Fish Isle. There isn't so much an art history reference, but it's interesting to note that one of these islands looks a lot like Tindalmur in the Danish Faroe Islands, which are 200 miles north of Scotland. Tindalmur has an interesting legend associated with it. Apparently, a family with a small child lived on the island, and one day a large eagle came and stole the small child. That's quite similar to what happens to Link's little sister, Errol, in the beginning of the game. However, while Link is able to save his sister, the child of the Tindalmore legend later dies from the eagle's injuries. I return to the Tower of the Gods now to look at the lifeless mask of Godan. Godan's a mid-game boss who looks like a disembodied head with a crown of light on top of him and giant stone humanish hands. Godan might have taken some hints from the Egyptian goddess Hathor, who turned into a bull with a crown of light. This diorite bust of Hathor is from the Egyptian New Kingdom period, around 1300 BC. Hathor was a fertility goddess, but she's also known as the goddess of the Great Flood of Egypt. Seeing as Hyrule is now under its own Great Flood, perhaps Godan represents descent into a watery abyss. Once you've descended deep below the Tower of the Gods, you find yourself in front of Hyrule Castle. Upon entering, you see several lions with swords. These are actually considered rampant lions and heraldry symbols. Lions like this are also commonly found in statues and gates and entryways, like at the famed lion gate at Mycenae. Mycenae was an ancient Greek civilization in the Bronze Age. In fact, a lot of medieval heraldry may have been brought from the ancient Greeks. Thanks guys, that's all for now. If you're interested to know more about any of the pieces mentioned, I've left links below. Feel free to follow on Facebook, Twitter, or subscribe to Art History and Video Games.